Hi YouTube, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. In this video, I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride to watch me transform an antique dresser start to finish. I have no vision for this piece yet, so you're gonna watch me kind of go through all the roller coaster of emotions when it comes to me refinishing a piece of furniture. If you're new here to my channel, welcome. I do everything from simple do-it-yourself projects to restoring old and vintage furniture. If you are coming back and you're a regular subscriber, thank you so much. Nice to see you again. If you guys want to follow me on all my other social media platforms, you can follow me here. I got Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, I'm on it. So let's get to the other side of my workshop and let's get started on this project. Okay, we're on the other side of my workshop. It is cold here in New Hampshire. It's only 25 degrees outside right now at this very moment. And my basement, I don't heat it. I rely on the heat from the upstairs. Even though it's, it's set up to have the heat turned on, it's electric heat and it would just cause my bill to go up higher than it already is. So if you see me in this video, put a robe on, my work robe, just laugh with me, okay? That's what I do to stay warm down here. I've got a little space heater while I do my video and while I work. So this piece that we're going to be working on, I say we, we are going to be working on this together. This dresser probably dates back to the 1930s, 1940s. It sits on four caster wheels. So the first thing I personally do when I obtain a piece of furniture, I give it the old shake. <laughs> I like to find out the weak spots. Do I need to reinforce anything? I look at all the things that I possibly need to repair first. So a couple things that I'm noticing first on this top drawer here, I've got some of the scroll work that's chipped off right in here. And that's nothing that a little wood putty can't fix. So I'll fix that there. I'm also noticing there is a chip out of the bottom leg here. I can bring my camera down here so you can see it. But what's great is I kept the chip of the leg. So I will just epoxy that back on. So right there, that little piece, the rounded portion of the leg came off. So I'll be able to just glue that back on there. I do have a couple areas where the veneer is chipped. So this is veneer and how I know that it's veneer, I'll do a close up. There's a seam that goes down the dresser fronts here. So they placed those, the veneer inlay and just glued it down. Remember veneer is a very, very thin piece of, uh, of wood that goes over the drawer and on these old pieces if you can salvage the veneer that's fantastic sometimes you can't it's too chipped away too damaged so there you can see there that seam and it is bubbling up a little bit right there it's lifting it's so another thing i'll do is i'll glue that down weight it down um with a clamp or maybe a brick i use bricks too so i will fix that Everything else looks to be pretty good. Um, all the drawers are in really good condition. There's no splitting. That's another thing I look for. Also, when you're working on a piece of furniture, oh, this is a great example because it's happening right now. Look at this. See, the drawer is loose on the dovetails. So what I'll do is I'll re-glue that as well, secure that. I do all of my fixing, all of my gluing, clamping, epoxying, all of that stuff before I start working on a piece of furniture. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that and then we'll come back here and we'll get started with what I think I'm gonna do with this piece. The direction that I think I'm going to go is I'm gonna try sanding this veneer. What well, can be a little tricky because veneer is super, super, super thin. And sometimes you can sand right through it. And once that happens, then you're probably gonna end up having to paint over those areas. Or if you're very seasoned at repairing veneer, you can hand draw the, um, the wood grain in, but that's, that's like expertise level. I've only done that a couple times. I'm still learning. 
how to do that. Um, I'll also be shop backing out all the dust and the grossness out of here. And I'm trying to see if there's anything else that needs to be. Oh, there's a couple. There's just a little bit right down here. Little chips of veneer down here. So what I do is I used to fill that in with um, wood putty. I now use Bondo. I like Bondo. It's stronger, stronger material, and I feel like it holds up better over time. So I'm going to get to fixing those areas, and then we'll get started with sanding. Okay, another thing while I was vacuuming, I noticed that the drawer tracks um, on the center part, these are solid, they're nice and sturdy, glued down. These are lifting just a little bit, so I'm gonna hammer them in, and then I'm going to re-glue them, um, all three of these here. This is the glue I like to use right here, Type Bond. It's my favorite. So you're gonna see me glue the center drawer tracks along with checking all the drawers and the dovetails and getting those glued up as well. Okay, in between gluing the dovetail drawers, I'm letting those sit for a while. I'm going to epoxy this piece that broke off and get that back into place. Thankfully, it came off in just one little piece, but this is what I use. I like a Gorilla Epoxy Clear. It says it, sit, it sets in about five minutes, but I usually leave my clamp on a little bit longer than that. So what you do is, um, it's like a syringe and there's two parts to it. You push it down with equal pressure on each of them and they come out and you can do it. You can mix this on like an old paper plate or a piece of cardboard, whatever you got handy. And I just push out enough that I use or that I need to use for whatever I'm fixing. And so I'm just came out like that and just stir it. And I get these popsicle sticks at the dollar store. All my supplies I get on the cheap. That is the only way to do it. You wanna keep your overhead down. That way you can make the most on each of your flip, flips that you do. So then I just spread it like I'm spreading a cheese cracker, except this is not delicious, like a Triscuit. I do it on this side and then I put a little bit on the receiving end down here and then I set it in place and then I'll hold it with a clamp and this method works very very well for me for fixing broken pieces off a dresser and old furniture you're gonna run into it it's just how it is with old pieces of furniture and it's gonna line up perfectly because I already tried beforehand which is nice that this is just in one chunk. It's a little slippery going on and then I just set it. It's already staying by itself without the help of a clamp, but I'm trying to get it as flush as possible. And I have excess right there that's oozing out. This is why I love having wet wipes at all times in my workshop. So I'm gonna wipe that excess off now. It's just easier to do it now than when it dries, getting the excess off, squeezing it again, and then I'm gonna set it with my clamp. Easy peasy. All right, on to the next fix. Okay, I try to multitask and make use of my time wisely when refinishing a piece of furniture. So now um, both sides of the drawers, the dovetails have been glued and they're drying. Uh, that missing piece is drying as well. We got that set. I am going to clean the inside of this dresser um, and I'm also going to take it to the outside as well. You wouldn't believe how much dust, dirt, grime, grossness, disgustification, if that is a word, that you will find on these old pieces of furniture. You may look at it and go, oh, it looks clean. No, it is not. So, please get yourself a good cleaner. Um, I like to use crud cutter, works amazing. Um, I just take old rags that I have around my shop and I give it a good scrub down. 
if you refinish furniture, if you're just starting to do this, please do this step. Um, especially if you're flipping furniture that people are going to be using. Nobody wants to open up a dresser that they've spent some good money on and find that it just is gross inside. So clean your piece of furniture inside and out. And that's what I'm going to do next. Okay guys, as I was cleaning the dresser with crud cutter, um, I cleaned the back of my pieces of furniture as well. I was noticing the backing on this dresser is just lifting slightly in some areas, nothing horrendous, just it needs a good nail or two. So anytime I can bust out my nail gun, I am gonna do it. So I love this baby by Porter Cable. Um, I did spend a little bit on this. It's a little bit of a toy, but it comes in handy so much. So I'm gonna take the safety off and we're just gonna put a couple reinforcements in on this back um, just to make sure it's as, as secure as can be. Oh, don't you just love that sound? Woo, power baby. Um, and that's what I love about this tool. It gets the job done so fast and efficiently, and I don't have to be pounding nails with a hammer. All right, that looks good. All right, that is nice and tight now. So just wanted to show you that's another thing I usually end up fixing or having to do on a piece of furniture. Um, if you're gonna start to do this long-term, um, I would say get one of these. It'll come in handy for so many projects. Okay, my next fix is to fix the lifting veneer. Not only do I have to fill in some of these areas where the veneer is missing, which I have a few spots, the not only is the veneer missing, it's lifting off the piece of furniture. So I need to glue it down, but in order to get the glue underneath that veneer, in order to clamp it down and make sure it lays flat, I have to use one of these syringes. I get these off Amazon. You fill them with wood glue, and then you're able to get the syringe underneath that lifting veneer, squirt it in there, press down that lifting veneer, and then I usually put scrap wood, a piece of wood, down over that lifting piece, and then I clamp it, and then I let it sit overnight to make sure it gets dried completely. And then I'll come in tomorrow, and I will fill that area either with Bondo or with wood putty, colored wood putty. So my goal is with this piece, I hope it works out, my goal is, is to save the veneer, save this beautiful wood grain, sand it, and restain it. And in order to match up, in order to camouflage those areas with the lifting veneer and the chipped veneer, I need to repair it properly. This gets a little uh, stressful because I mean, I'm still learning how to do this. So I'm going to try and match it up. And then you sometimes have to, you know, pencil in wood grain and make it look like the oopsie, the, the chipped veneer never happened. And so I'm still learning to do that. I, I did another video, if you guys wanna go check it out, I'll put the link below this video on how to fix veneer. And I was pretty impressed with that piece. It was my first time doing it. And I got a little, I got a lot of people who were like, commended me for my efforts because I did a very good job. Afterwards, you couldn't even tell there was a piece of veneer missing on the top of that dresser. So go check out that video. I go really in depth on how I fixed that one. So I'm gonna be busy here uh, fixing my lifting veneer. Um, I have a lot of spots on the dressers, up, um, on the drawers. Upon further inspection, I noticed that I have more lifting veneer than I thought. Not really chips missing out of the veneer, just the veneer lifting and I wanna secure it. Then I also noticed if you're gonna be working on old dressers, anytime there's like ornate, um, like appliques areas, pull at those, see if they're loose. This one's loose here a little bit, so I'm gonna be getting my syringe in there as well and getting glue down there and clamping it. Um, this is the level of work I do. I don't just try to do a fast flip as fast as I can. I wanna do it the right way, the correct way. I don't want my customer, whoever will be purchasing this dresser, to have issues down the road. I want this dresser to be strong, intact, and not only that, but beautiful when I'm done with it. So I'm gonna start um, syringing, gluing, 
and we'll be back later. Okay, y'all, I'm going to head to bed, but I wanted to show you what the dresser looks like in its fixed stage. I've got some drawers clamped here. This drawer here had a lot of lifting veneer, so that's why I have so many bricks. After I glued the area, that's how I'm laying it flat. And I got some clamps there on the appliques right up there to secure them and a piece right there. And I still have a clamp on that little piece that came off that we epoxied earlier. So all in all, a good productive time spent on the dresser. And I'll take all of this off tomorrow morning and we'll get started where I left off. Okay, it has been 24 hours. Everything has been clamped and sitting. And I'm gonna unclamp everything and get everything started for my next move on this refinishing project. So this is what happens. So I'm, I'm getting you into my brain of how this works. Sometimes I have a vision in going into a project and I'm like, okay, that's what I'm gonna do and that's that. Other times I have to let the furniture kind of take the direction that it wants to go. Meaning with this project, now that I've got things glued and clamped and the veneer all set, I don't know what color I'm using for wood putty because I don't know what direction I'm going yet with staining. I don't know if I'm going with a darker stain. I don't know if I'm doing kind of like a bleached, whitewashed look. So it all depends on how well this is gonna clean up with sanding, which will determine what color wood putty I'm gonna be putting in. So I can either, if I go with a darker stain on top, I'm gonna to be wanting to put like a darker wood putty. By the way, I love Timbermate. This is my favorite wood putty. Um, or if I go lighter with my colors and do more of like a whitewash bleached look on this dresser, I'll use a lighter color because it'll just make everything blend in easier. So you're gonna see me in this next part. I'm going to be, I'm gonna to start to sand and I'm gonna see how well this veneer can handle the sanding and how much it'll clean up. And that'll give me direction on what color I'm going to be making this dresser. So stay tuned. You're gonna see in a time-lapse video now of me sanding. Okay, it's another night in the workshop. This is where I'm at with this dresser. So I did have a particular vision in mind for this dresser and more often than not, <laughs> the furniture that I'm working on, they make the decision of where I'm gonna go with it. So this is what I'm gonna do now with this piece. Um, everything has been sanded that needs to be sanded. So I'm going to paint the sides and like the shell of the dresser white. And then I'm going to stain the drawers and the top. I'm not sure yet what color, probably a darker color, or I might go lighter. I, I'm still on the fence where I'm gonna go with that. I guess after I paint it first, the sections that I'm painting, that I can make that decision. Uh, sanding the drawers came out pretty nice. So I'll get those cleaned up and get ready to stain those, whatever color I'm staining them. But first, before I paint, I have to fill in some of the missing chips of veneer with my wood putty. So I'm gonna go with a lighter color, the lightest I have. I'm out of white. Timbermate does make a white wood putty, which is awesome. Um, but I'm gonna have to go with the lightest that I have, which is this shade right here. So I'll do that on the sides where there's some chips out of there. And then what I'm gonna do with the legs on the bottom, if you can see them, I'm going to take stripper to the bottom of these legs right here. It is really difficult to sand curved legs like this. So I'll take my spray stripper, get that on there, let it sit for 15 minutes and then remove the, um, the varnish and then I'll be able to stain this as well. So this will be stained, top will be stained, drawers will be stained, and the shell will be white. I'll probably distress it. And that's where I'm at right now with this piece. So I'm gonna get started, I'm gonna start puttying, and then you're gonna see me uh, prep the piece to paint it, and then we're gonna get to painting. 
Okay, it's another day and I am still trudging along on this dresser. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prep this piece to be painted. So on the areas that I'm going to be painting, I need to block the potential wood tannins coming to the surface or any stains that may come through. So I'm gonna use shellac. If you know my channel, you know I am a big cheerleader for prepping your pieces of furniture before you paint them. So I like shellac in a spray can. I used to apply it with a chip brush, which is still fine. I just find it's more time consuming. So I like the spray can, it just goes faster for me. So you'll notice that in the next time-lapse video, you're gonna see me apply the shellac and it dries really quick so when I say apply two coats you can do this probably within a half hour tops so I will spray the shellac I'll let it sit for about 15 minutes and then I can apply my second coat of shellac and then I can start painting now make sure with shellac it is pretty potent um, meaning like there's there's some smell to it so make sure you're working in a well ventilated area wear a mask if you need to or if you feel comfortable with doing that then the the next thing I'm going to be showing you in a time-lapse video, I'm going to be stripping the front legs because I want to stain those. So you can see one of the legs back here. Boy, how can I do that with my arm? There we go, right there. Now these legs aren't straight. They have some curvature to them. So I'm going to be using this product right here, Clean Strip Stripper. This stuff works awesome. It is my favorite stripper when it comes to taking finishes off furniture. Now this stuff is very potent, okay? So you definitely need a well ventilated area. You definitely need to wear a mask with this. And I would actually wear gloves, some really like heavy duty, um, like rubber gloves. And I will apply this, let it sit for 15 minutes, and then I'll scrub away with some um, really fine steel wool is usually what I use. And this will take the finish right off in no time. So you're going to see time-lapse video next with me doing the shellac and stripping those front legs. Okay, I got the bottom front legs stripped and sanded and I believe I'm going to stain those. I, I think that's the direction I'm going with the front legs. Um, the rest of the shell of the dresser, I'm going to get painted now. You're gonna see me do that on a time-lapse video. So the shell you saw, I sprayed it with two coats of shellac and now I'm ready to paint it. I love this paint, it's cheap, it works well. It's from Walmart. It's by their line of paint called Waverly. It's in a color Snow White chalk paint. Um, what I like to do so I can reuse my painting trays, I just line it with tin foil and I'm gonna use a four inch foam roller along with a Klingon, I like calling this my Chubba Wubba brush. If you follow me, that's what I call this one. It's a short brush. They have little, they have letters and numbers associated with their brushes and this is a S. 30. So this is like one of my favorite brushes. I like one with a short handle. I find that I have less wrist pain uh, with a shorter handle on a brush. So you'll see me um, roll a lot of it, but then also do some fine detail work with the Klingon brush. And I got a mister in case my brush starts to drag. It can do that with chalk paint because it's a really dry paint. I'll use a mister just to refresh it. And then I'm going to wrap the bottom legs that I just freshly stripped and sanded. I'm gonna wrap tin foil around the legs so it'll protect them from getting splattered with paint. So that's what you're gonna see me do in this next portion. Okay, everyone, I wanted to give you a little encouragement and advice when it comes to painting furniture, especially when you're painting it white. Your first coat is always gonna look awful. It's gonna look terrible. And I go light on my first coats of paint. I don't glob a lot on. You want to go light with your coats of paint. 
you do not want to put a lot on because then it's going to take a lot longer to dry and it won't lay flat. So I do really light coats of paint and with a white, you're probably going to look at maybe three to five coats, depending on how much coverage you want. I'm going to be distressing this dresser, so I don't mind the wood peeking through on some of those edges. So I'm probably going to do three coats on this dresser. I'm going to get started with my second coat here, but I wanted to show you the reality of painting with any type of white paint. Um, you're going to... It's look, it's gonna look bad, but that's okay, you guys. It's gonna look better as you apply more coats. So don't fret after you apply that first coat and think, oh my gosh, I'm doing this wrong, and this paint's terrible, and whatnot, okay? Hang in there with me. The stain color I will be using on the front legs is Colonial Maple by General Finishes. This is a gel stain. It gives a nice, warm brown tone and so I'm going to apply it to both of the legs and then I also will be using it on the drawer fronts and on the top of the dresser. I love this color. Okay guys I just sanded those legs on the dresser and I stained them. Next, what's next with this dresser? So I have the top uh, already sanded. I have the drawer fronts sanded and we are going to stain those areas with the exact same color that I used on the front legs. Uh, in the meantime of me working on this project and every other thing that I'm doing for my business, I did a little detail work on this dresser. I love adding personal touches on my project. So one thing that I did is I stenciled this really pretty pattern on the inside of the drawers. And I just recently did a short video. It's under the section on my YouTube channel called Shorts. They're 60 second long videos. And this one's t um, titled Stencil Like a Pro. So go check this out. I show exactly how I do this and how I get clean, crisp lines every time. Go check that out. I also decided to kind of go in a different direction. This happens a lot with my projects. I start with a vision. I'm like, okay, this is working. When I painted the sides, after I did one coat, I was like, I think it's gonna to be too plain white on the sides. I wanna add some texture. So I ended up, I decided to add textured wallpaper to both sides of this dresser. I have a detailed video on how to do that specifically. You can go check that out. I'll put the link under the description of this video. But to save time on this video, I just did it. Um, I love how it looks, it adds a fun dimension to this piece and it'll match perfectly with this really pretty design on the side of the drawer. So those are just fun details that I added. Um, in my next move with this dresser, I'm going to be staining the top. You're gonna to see me do that in a time-lapse video along with the drawer fronts. And then what else do I have to do? Oh, I'm gonna just stress the edges just a little bit and then we'll add the hardware back on and this project should be finished. So I'm really excited to be at the tail end of this project. It's been taking me a while. So let's keep moving. Okay, so I am done distressing the dresser. I wanted to show you two tools that I use for distressing. Um, you notice in a close up, I use this little gadget here. These are great. Um, I'll include links of all the products that I use within um, this video. So if you guys are interested in what I'm using and you're looking to purchase it, you can do so. It's usually through Amazon. So this is just like a Velcro tab of sandpaper goes on like that. And this is great for getting into 
little areas where you need to get in into to distress. Now, when I distress along long edges, along a long side of a dresser, I want to do it as quick as possible. This little tool is not going to cut it. So that's when I bring in my sander here. I love this one. This is by Festool. This is their RTS 400. It's like a rectangular sander. You can still see I have the white paint on there from where I sanded the sides. I love this gadget. It is a little spendy. Um, there are other ones that are, I guess, not as nice, not as, not as posh as this, but I bought this like a year ago. I've been in the business for a while. So anything that I recommend on my channel here, again, I am big into saving money. I don't want you having to go out and buy all these fancy tools, but if you do this a lot, I would recommend um, getting a sander like this. It's great for getting into the edges, the top edges of a piece of furniture, and it's also great for distressing really quickly along those long lines. So that's how I distress. So what I have left to do, I, all I have left to do is put a top coat on the top and the drawer fronts and the top that I, the top coat that I'm gonna use that I absolutely love, it's by General Finishes, big surprise. I love all their products. Um, this is their Arm & Seal. I'm gonna do it in a satin finish. They have other glosses that you can find, but I, I usually stick with a satin, I like it. Occasionally I'll do a high gloss, but I'm gonna do a satin one. So I apply this with a two inch foam brush and you can watch me do it on a time-lapse video. So I'm gonna show you how I actually apply this product. And then along the areas that I painted, so the top two drawers I painted, along the side here, and I also take it over the wallpaper, because you remember the wallpaper, I painted it. So I'll take some clear wax, and the brand that I like, it's by DIY, it's Debbie's Design Diary. So here's the clear wax here. And that's what I'm gonna apply on those areas. Uh, what else can I tell you? Oh, I did want to tell you. Okay, so do you remember the areas that I used wood putty? Now, sometimes with wood putty, when you are repairing veneer that's missing, this can get a little tricky, and I'm still not the best at it. I'm still learning this craft because this is like a whole new level of like woodworking. So I took wood putty, and this stain that I used by General Finishes, the Colonial Maple, took on like it was able to penetrate the wood putty a little bit, but there I could still see the lighter portions of it. That's when I use, it's by Mohawk, they're like fill stick. So this is like a coloring, they're soft sticks and you can use these to camouflage areas where you're missing wood putty or missing veneer. So this is after you fix it. Um, and then also like graining pencils this gets really tricky, but I did it in a few areas and I'll give you a close up. No judgment, I'm still learning, but I'm gonna show you here. I was able to camouflage it quite well, I think. So I was going in and trying to match up the stain color because along this, you have to draw in the wood grain. So I did that with the black pencil and I think it looks okay. So I'll do a close up of that and you can see how I repaired those areas. Now, if you're like this, you're gonna be able to see that I possibly repaired it. But from right here, I can't tell. So I think that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna put my top coat on, I'm gonna wax it, then I'm done with this piece. And I'm pretty excited about it. Okay guys, I am finally done with this dresser and this dresser has taken me so long to finish, but <sighs> she's done, she's done, she's glorious, she's beautiful, but let me tell you, the top coat gave me a little bit of trouble, so go check out my most recent tutorial. It's titled, How to Fix Fisheye. If you don't know what fisheye is, go check it out. 
I tried to make this video go faster. I tried to make this restoration go a little faster and I skipped a step and boy, did I pay for it. So I had to end up doing a tutorial on my oopsie, but it was informative and I think I'm gonna help people by making that mistake, but live and learn. So I had a little trouble with the top coat. It's fixed now, it looks gorgeous. And I did end up going, instead of a satin finish with my top coat, I went gloss. I took a chance and it looks gorgeous in a high gloss, so I'm glad I did that. She's all waxed. The handles, the knobs are put back on and she looks so good. I'm gonna do a little video for you guys, a little tour of her, cause I don't think you're gonna appreciate all her beauty um, behind me. I need to get the light on her and then you'll see, but all the sides are stenciled. All of the drawers are stenciled. They look gorgeous. They coordinate with the wallpaper, the painted wallpaper on the side. And I'm just thrilled with how she turned out. I'm so sorry this YouTube video ended up being so long, but this is what happens when I film a real process when it comes to restoring furniture. I mean, some processes, if you're just gonna paint a piece completely 100% paint, it goes a lot faster. But when you start getting into repairing veneer, gluing down loose veneer, um, penciling in the grain on veneer, when you're prepping correctly, when you're using enough coats of paint, when you're cleaning hardware, when you're stenciling the sides, when you're adding wallpaper, sanding, top coats, it's a long process. So appreciate those of us that are out here that are doing what I feel is, it's more of an advanced level of refinishing furniture. We're just not painting furniture. We are really trying to enhance the natural beauty of an antique piece of furniture. I try my best when I can to preserve the, nat the natural integrity of a piece of furniture. And I hope I did that with this one. I just brought it up a little standard of being modernized with painting it white, adding some wallpaper. But you can see I did keep that beautiful, gorgeous veneer and I highlighted it. So I hope whomever ends up buying this piece will enjoy it for many, many, many years to come. I would love to keep this piece, let me tell you. I'm debating it, but I also need to pay some bills. So. Until next time, you guys, I'm not bringing my dogs down. It's too cold. It's like 1230 at night. Um, it's freezing here in New Hampshire. We're getting hit with another six to 12 inches of snow. Yay us. So um, I'm letting the dogs sleep. Biscuit and bacon are upstairs. So thank you for sticking with me, you guys. If you uh, have not followed my channel here, the subscribe button is in the lower right hand corner. And you can also find me all over social media. I have a Facebook business page. I'm on Instagram. And until I see you guys next time, thank you so much for joining me. Toodaloo. Bye.